What's up everyone, I'm Nick, and in this video we're gonna learn how to use ternary operators. And ternary operators are basically just a shorthand way of writing an if-else statement and putting it into one line of code. So in SwiftUI, we use ternary operators not only to shorten and condense our code, but also to update and customize and even animate certain modifiers. So before we get into it, I just wanna throw out there that you should have a basic understanding on how if else statements work before moving into these ternary operators. So in the last video in the series, I did a whole video on conditional logic on these if else statements. So if you watch that, you're definitely ready. If you have not, I would recommend watching that video and then coming on back. But either way, ternary operators are helpful and very fun to use. So I am excited to show you guys and let's take a look. Welcome back everyone. Let's create a new file for this video. Right click the navigator, new file, Swift UI view, and we are talking about ternary operators. So let's call this ternary bootcamp. Go ahead and click create, click resume on the canvas, and let's get started. I'm gonna start this off very simply with kind of what we did in the last video with the conditional statements. So let's start with a V stack. At the top of the V stack, let's add a button. Open the parentheses. Let's use the string protocol approach for now. Let's keep the title just saying uh, button and press enter on the action. Let's leave the action blank for a second and below the button, let's add a rounded rectangle with, with a corner radius of 25. Let's fill this rectangle with color.red and let's give it a dot frame with a width of 200, a height of 100, and we don't need the alignment. I'm gonna push this all to the top, so let's add a spacer below it. Now let's pretend like we had a situation where we wanted to change the color of this rectangle. Well, we can start by adding a state variable like we did in the last video. We'll do at state var, is starting state of type bool equals false. A beginner developer would probably say we can just do an if else statement. We can say if is starting state, open the brackets, and if it's starting state, we'll put the red rectangle. And then we can do else. If it's not starting state, so if it's false, we can do another rectangle and we'll do blue. And when we click this button, let's toggle is starting state. So let's do is starting state dot toggle. Let's also put the, va the value of this into the button. So we'll do colon forward slash open close parentheses is starting state dot description. So we're going to toggle is starting state. And when it's true, we have a rounded rectangle with red. When it's false, we have a rounded rectangle with blue. And this is going to work and we're going to click it. And it looks like it's working perfectly. But what you might not realize here is that this is actually creating a rounded rectangle and drawing it on the screen. And then when we switch, it's creating a new rounded rectangle, filling it blue and drawing that on the screen. So it's less efficient from a UI perspective because we're drawing a new rounded rectangle every time we switch on the screen, right? So it's drawing this one. And then when it switches, it's gonna get rid of this one and draw a new one. And it's also less efficient in our code because we have all of this code here basically twice. And all we did was change this color, right? So there's an easier way to do this in SwiftUI and it's called a ternary operator. So let's start by deleting this else statement. Let's delete this is starting state. Let's just go back to our regular rounded rectangle. And in this fill modifier, I'm gonna add a ternary operator and I'm gonna write is starting state question mark color dot red and then we're going to do a colon and we're going to do color dot blue so this is a ternary statement and it's basically the same thing as an if else we're saying if is starting state is true so it's really saying if is starting state is equal to true question mark so if it's true put red otherwise else put blue. So this is like the if, and then this is the else. So it's the same kind of logic, but in a super short form here. 
And we don't need this is equal to true because we know in Swift we can just do if is starting state. And that is the same thing as setting it equal to true. So if starting state, red, otherwise blue. So now when we click the button, we can see that the rectangle is changing and it looks the same, but we only have one rectangle and all it's doing is changing the color on that rectangle. So as you can see already, this is much shorter code. And you can do this ternary operator with pretty much any modifiers. So we could change the corner radius. We can do if is starting state 25, otherwise zero. So now we have zero corner radius, which is basically hard corners. And when we switch it, it now has the 25 corner radius. We can do the frame. We can Let's put the width and the height on separate lines. And then we'll do uh, is starting state, question mark, 200. Otherwise, let's do uh, maybe 50, nice and small. And for the height, we'll do is starting state. If it's in the starting state, we'll do uh, 400. Otherwise, let's do 50. So when we click the button, we can see that we're changing the color, the size, the rounded rectangle. And we can change pretty much any modifier that we want to add to this rectangle. Just to give you guys a couple quick other examples before we go, let's add a text. And in the text, let's change the string based on starting state. So we'll do is starting state question mark. If it's starting, if it's in the starting state, what do we want it to say? We'll put starting state. And then we'll do otherwise else. So if it's not starting state, we'll put uh, ending state, period. So then we can now we can change the text, starting state, ending state, starting state, ending state. And again, we can do this ternary operator with pr pretty much any logic in our view. And it is super handy. And uh, we're going to use this a lot in the next couple videos as we start getting into animations. So it's going to be a lot of fun and you're going to become an expert on this ternary operator. So if it's still a little confusing, do not worry. We're going to cover it more in detail in the next couple videos. So this was just a quick introduction. These are super powerful, super useful. So thanks for watching. As always, I am Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you are enjoying this content. And I'll see you all in the next video.